Welcome to the channel guys, today we are going to take a look at the difference in performance that you get upon upgrading to 32GB of RAM in dual channel from 16GB of RAM in single channel. If you've been following my channel and watched all of my latest videos, save yourself some time and skip to the next segment of the video as no other new games are being taken into account in this video. These results can also be taken for difference in performance upon upgrading to 16GB of dual channel as well, unless the specific title and context doesn't use more than 16GB of RAM. The laptop in which these benchmarks were done is an Ace Operator Helios 300 equipped with an Intel i5 9300H and an 80W GTX 1660 Ti. The tests were done in turbo mode where the CPU's power limit 1 is raised to 56W from 45W and the GPU is overclocked by 160MHz on the core and 320MHz on the memory. The CPU was further undervolted from the stock undervolt to minus 135mV. All the tests were run in performance mode at 1080p and while being connected to a power outlet. All the dedicated videos for the games tested for benchmarks will be linked in the description below. Some games were tested after repasting the thermal compound with Thermal Grizzles Cryonaut, a dedicated video will be made in the near future about this. That being said, I don't wanna waste any more of your time, so I'm gonna breeze through all of the benchmarks. Here we go. CSGO was tested with the electrical benchmark on a 64 tick server with all the settings either cranked to maximum, medium or lowest as the game doesn't have any predefined presets. Being a CPU heavy title, this saw a massive improvement in average frame rate of up to 43% at the lowest settings and almost 33% in the highest settings, scoring an average frame rate of 232 FPS in dual channel, which is good to see and well above refresh rate of the monitor, which is much needed for this game. Far Cry 5 was tested with the built-in benchmark with all the presets available. As this game uses a decent combination of both CPU and GPU, it's good to see a 17% increment in the average frame rate at ultra preset and about 23% at low preset. 1% lows also managed to stay well about 60 FPS with dual channel memory with a difference of over 17% over single channel memory configuration giving a really smooth gameplay experience. The system used around 7.5GB of RAM in single channel and 8.5GB of RAM in dual channel. Far Cry New Dawn was also tested with the built-in benchmark with HD textures on. A similar improvement in performance in this game just like Far Cry 5 can be observed that is, around 18% average frame rate and 14% and 1% lows at ultra preset. A slightly better increment in performance at lower settings of around 23% in average and 21% and 1% lows at the low preset can be observed. The system used around 8GB of RAM in single channel and 9GB of RAM in dual channel. GTA 5 was tested with the built-in benchmark using DirectX 11 with all the options turned off in the advanced graphics menu and everything cranked to either highest, medium or lowest as the game doesn't have any predefined setting presets. We can see a massive improvement to frame rate in both average and 1% lows with around 32% and 35% increment respectively at highest settings. A slightly larger increment of 36% and 40% in average frame rate at 1% lows respectively at lowest settings can be seen. The system used around 9GB of RAM in single channel and over 10GB of RAM in dual channel, although actual gameplay can reach around 12GB of usage in dual channel. If you're planning to apply mods or increase the draw distance in the game, you might want to look forward to increase the RAM over 16GB. Rise of the Tomb Raider was tested using the built-in benchmark using DirectX 12, an exclusive full screen mode with anti-aliasing set to SMAA and stereoscopic 3D turned off. A pretty decent improvement of about 18% in average frame rate and 24% in 1% lows was observed at highest preset. 1% lows above 60 FPS was possible with dual channel at the highest preset. As the settings were lowered, a much greater improvement of about 38% in average frame rate and 36% in 1% lows was observed. The system used around 10GB of RAM in single channel and almost 12GB of RAM in dual channel. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with a built-in benchmark using DirectX 12 in exclusive full screen mode with anti-aliasing set to SMAAD x 2 and stereoscopic 3D turned off. A good improvement to average frame rate of about 20% was observed while the 1% saw a much appreciable improvement of about 44% at highest preset. 
As the settings were lowered, even the average frame rate saw a 44% increase in performance in the lowest preset. The system used over 9GB of RAM in single channel and 10GB of RAM in dual channel. Assassin's Creed Origins was tested with a built-in benchmark. Being an equally CPU-heavy title, this game saw a good increment to average frame rate and 1% lows at almost every setting, which is much needed, as the hardware cannot achieve 60fps and 1% lows even at the lowest settings. The system used over 8GB of RAM in single channel and 9GB of RAM in dual channel. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was tested with a built-in benchmark. Yet again, being an equally CPU-heavy title, the game saw a good increment to average frame rate and 1% lows at almost every setting, which is again much needed as the hardware cannot achieve 60fps average and 1% lows even at the lowest settings. The system used over 8GB of RAM in single channel and 8.5GB of RAM in dual channel. Call of Duty Warzone was tested in the practice mode in Battle Royale to eliminate any other factors related to connectivity for similar periods of time, with all settings ranked to either maximum, medium or lowest as the game doesn't have any predefined setting presets. Being mostly GPU bound at highest settings, this game only saw an improvement of 8% and 6% in average frame rate and 1% lows respectively. Lowering the settings did allow the average frame rate to increase by 30%. A future update of the game performed much better scoring 125fps on average and 81fps on 1% lows even at the highest settings. Although the percentage difference should hold up or be better as everything is being uplifted by the same amount. The system used over 12GB of RAM in single channel and almost 14GB of RAM in dual channel. Although the newer update seems to use over 15GB of RAM. So having more than 16GB is actually recommended for this game. PUBG was tested in the training mode following a similar path and performing similar activities. Being a GPU bound title, the game only saw an increment of 8% in average frame rate but a significant 40% increment in 1% lows which makes the game run a lot smoother. Lowering the settings did raise the increase in performance by a good amount. The system used around 9GB of RAM in single channel and almost 11GB of RAM in dual channel. Valorant was tested in the practice mode by following a similar path and performing similar activities to avoid any other factors related to connectivity issues with every setting ranked to either maximum, medium or lower settings as the game doesn't have any predefined setting presets. This game saw an insane improvement in average frame rate and 1% lows at pretty much every preset with over 54% and 106% in the highest settings. That's literally twice the performance. This is expected as the game is heavily CPU bound and fairly easy to run as well. The experience is quite smooth as the game's frame rate is well above the refresh rate of the screen. The system used over 6GB of RAM in single channel and almost 8GB of RAM in dual channel. Forza Horizon 4 was tested with the built-in benchmark. This game saw a pretty noticeable difference in performance with about 33% in both average frame rate and 1% lows at the ultra preset. The performance becomes much more pronounced as the settings get lowered, going up to 50% increment at a very low preset. The system used over 9GB of RAM in single channel and 10GB of RAM in dual channel. NFS Payback was tested by playing the same race for a similar period of time. Being a CPU heavy title, even at ultra preset, an improvement of 19% in average frame rate and 27% in 1% lows can be seen. The system used over 9GB of RAM in single channel and almost 12GB of RAM in dual channel. NFS Heat was tested by playing the same race in both nighttime and daytime for similar durations. I personally think that this title isn't optimized well enough to perform decently even on higher end hardware. Irrespective, the game saw a decent increment in performance at every preset. The system used over 8GB of RAM in single channel and 11GB of RAM in dual channel. Tom Clancy's Division 2 was tested using the built-in benchmark. Being heavily CPU bound, this game saw a minimal improvement of about 6% in average frame rate, yet 32% in 1% lows at ultra preset. Although at every low preset, the game performed much better with about 45% in average frame rate and 35% and 1% lows at the low preset. The system used over 11 GB of RAM in single channel and 13 GB of RAM in dual channel. Actual gameplay might make use of more RAM and hence more than 16 GB of RAM is recommended for this game. Fortnite was tested by playing in the battle lab mode by following similar paths and performing similar activities for similar periods of time. Although at ultra preset the game was mostly GPU bound, at lower settings the game performed exceptionally well at every preset with about 64% down average frame rate and massive 81% in 1% lows at low preset. Playing at high preset or lower 
will give you a good experience with the 144Hz display. The system used about 8GB of RAM in single channel and 9GB of RAM in dual channel. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint was tested using the built-in benchmark. Being equally CPU heavy title, the game saw a great improvement even at the Alta preset, dropping down settings to low, a much greater 62% average frame rate and 51% and 1% lows was observed. The system used a 19GB of RAM in single channel and 12GB of RAM in dual channel. For all the 17 games tested, on average, at high settings, an increment to average frame rate by over 22% and 1% lows by over 32% can be seen. While at the lower settings, almost 40% increase to average frame rate and over 38% in 1% lows can be seen on average. So it's quite clear that upgrading to 32GB and dual channel gives you a massive improvement in gaming. Now let's try to understand why or how this is happening. For example, let's imagine Big Billy to be our dear friend who loves eating hot dogs. Now Big Billy is no casual individual. He weighs almost twice as you and can eat you whole. Big Billy has a big mouth to help him in his day-to-day -day tasks which is mostly eating. He has two huge cheeks where he can store and chew on his food at the same time at lightning speeds. Let's say about 4 GHz. Wow. Unfortunately, Big Billy is somehow still human and has only two hands. But sadly, he lost one of his hands because he's functioning in single channel memory or maybe he just got very hungry and had to eat it as well. So Big Billy can only place one hot dog in his mouth at a time although he has two cheeks. The speed at which he eats is still the same, but he's not using the other part of his cheek as he is disabled. So let's say Big Billy can eat a million hot dogs in a 10 seconds, wow. a fairly decent number. But people around him are disappointed in his performance. Big Billy spends a lonely night staring at the sky, spots a shooting star and wishes he performs better. The next morning, Big Billy wakes up with two hands. Now he can use two hands to shove hot dogs into his face or both of his cheeks at the same time while trying to not consume his hands as well. Now everyone appreciates Big Billy for the fat f he is, no offense, as he can eat a million burgers in just 5 seconds and beg for more as now he's functioning in dual channel memory at the same 4 GHz speed. Now let's take a vendor into the equation as well. He's more than capable of keeping Billy fed with hot dogs at all times. His name is, well, GTX 1660 Ti. Weird? Well, I just couldn't come up with a pun. Unless Billy has two or more hands, he cannot use his mouth efficiently and hence the vendor slows down along with Billy while trying to make Billy work harder to meet his speed of supply. Now consider the scenario after the shooting star. Now Billy has two hands. The wow. vendor is now being utilized fully providing the hot dogs to Billy and working without wasting any time watching Billy eat talk about mukbang. Hence, everyone's working effectively, everyone's happy. Now let's move on to the part where you must concentrate on the benchmarks to get a better understanding of why we are seeing this difference in performance. A lot of information is being shown on the screen rather than just FPS on my benchmark videos. This is because I want you guys to see what's causing the difference in FPS as well. But not everyone knows what to look for. So this part of the video is to explain what you should be looking for when seeing such differences in benchmark videos. You can spot that the GPU usage is lower in single channel memory, credits to Big Billy for letting us understand why that's happening. The CPU usage also seems to be higher and lasting longer, again thanks to Big Billy. We know that he has to work longer to get the same number of hot dogs consumed and being tormented by the vendor doesn't help. He has to eat more than he can so he has to work harder as well. Although you also have to remember that the CPU changes its frequency many many times a second. So the longer it lasts at a specific frequency the higher chance we have to see it. By default the data updates once per second using MSI Afterburner. This can be made to work harder and faster which will show you the actual frequency at a higher update rate and you'll be able to see that it fluctuates many a times a second. Frame time graphs are also always shown in my videos to give you a better understanding how smooth the game runs. Every relatively longer spike in the graph indicates a stutter which will be recorded in the 1% lows and 0.1% lows shown just about the graph. In general, smoother the graph, smoother the gameplay. Higher frame rates will result in lower frame times. In general, in any game, as the settings get lowered, the possible frame rate increases substantially. 
if the CPU is provided with only single channel of memory, it cannot accept the frames output by the GPU fast enough and hence you get a lower net frame rate. If the CPU is provided with multiple channels of memory, the CPU will now be able to keep up with the GPU as we've seen from the Big Billy example. Now let's talk if you actually need 32GB of RAM. It sounds like a lot and it kind of is. If you are a very casual gamer, you don't need to upgrade to 32GB of RAM unless you're dealing with other mods or dealing with games in creative modes. But if you already have a single 16GB stick, then definitely go ahead and upgrade to 32GB in dual channel. Keep in mind some games use almost 15 to 16 gigabytes of RAM so if you're trying to have Discord running in the background or maybe some Spotify for some music or maybe a browser tab for some walkthrough for the game you're playing or just a combination of all of the above then you'll definitely exceed 16 gigabytes of RAM. Do not go out of your way to sell your existing single stick of 16 gigabytes of RAM. Just buy another 16 single gigabyte stick to get a net of 32 gigabytes in dual channel. If you are buying a new device right now or building a PC of your own, you should try your best to offer 32 gigabytes of RAM at least in dual channel. If you are looking forward to use creative applications and productive works like video editing or using design and simulation softwares, you'd be glad that you opted for 32 gigabytes of RAM. Cause I know as a matter of fact that most of you people are students who would like to use your machine not just for gaming but also for your academics, for your research work and you really don't want to be limited by computational hardware. Future games like Cyberpunk 2077, Assassin's Creed Valhalla and more may actually end up using more than 16 gigabytes of RAM. The operating system as well actually runs compressed to support low RAM capacities. By upgrading to higher capacities, you limit the compression, making everything feel more snappier by skipping decompression. You could also argue that running memory in dual channel is more beneficial than having more capacity in single channel. That is true to an extent. But at least you'll have a better upgrade path with the later. There is also a basic misconception that the latest 4 core processors are just not enough for gaming. That is just not true. People usually come to this conclusion as laptops generally ship with single channel memory and they just do some benchmarks out of the box and they just come to the conclusion that the laptop isn't performing well so they just blame it on the processor as they know they opted for i5 instead of an i7. But like I said, that's just not true. Just throw in another stick of RAM, let it run in dual channel memory and you'll know what your processor can do. You will see absolutely no perceivable difference between an i5 9300H from an i7 9750H. That's guaranteed. Sorry if I took a lot of your time but I just had to make this video for everyone to understand what's going on with this RAM madness. I'll also be making a video showing differences in temperatures and explaining the same as well. And I'll also make another video addressing all the misconceptions about gaming laptops in general and this Acer Predator Helios laptop in specific as well. So that this can help people who are facing problems with their current gaming laptop or maybe they are looking forward to buy one. I understand that I have only tested 17 games but I'm sorry I'll have to stop making these differences videos and RAM configurations as laptop RAM slots aren't designed to be used over and over. And data limit is a thing and just way too much work in general. Although I will be making a few benchmark videos on this laptop down the road as I get hold of more newer games. With that being said, I hope you found this video to be helpful and thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.